With the unprecedented total shift to remote learning because of the pandemic, a question in everyone's mind is what kind of uh, learning happened last school year uh, and, and will continue to happen this school year given the decision. As a backdrop, we'd like to, I'd like to us to recall that before the pandemic struck, we were informed by the 2018 PISA results testing 15-year-old students and 2019 teams testing grade four students that we performed miserably compared to other countries. I will describe what happened uh, using available national representative data on our basic education system and household. Next slide, please. I uh, will use this outline and present the objectives and data and methodology, and this will be followed by a, a description of the government and our responses as well as the household responses using official data. And I will describe the reachability of students and home support using a national representative household survey. And I conclude with a summary and recommendations. Next slide, please. I designed the, uh, the study uh, with uh, these uh, four object specific objectives in mind. So I want to describe the responses of the education sector the pandemic and describe how the students reaction to their use of uh, uh, offered uh, learning modalities and to explain the pattern of learning modality use, uh, use, uh, using household data. Uh, and this is a separate data set and describe uh, our drawing sites, I should say, on, on and recommendations to guide uh, impl implementation of remote learning. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, there are two data sets that I uh, basically that I use. One is the enrollment, uh, DepEd's enrollment data by learning a modality from the planning service of DepEd by level and by type of school. We thank uh, DepEd for that. And the second one is the 2020 Annual Poverty Indicator Survey, which provides enrollment data by level and type as well, uh, including the but includes availability of household amenities uh, that will enable connection to remote learning such as internet tv radio and cell phone and income i also tried to find the correlation of having internet connection at home um, this, this is a very important uh, information on explaining what happened in the homes so let me describe now the government responses in the next slide please So uh, when the, next slide please, when the uh, pandemic struck in March 2020, they prepared uh, the basic education continuity plan of the ELCP to guide the education sector's response. Uh, it listed the different learning modes uh, that uh, uh, should be used, including face-to-face -face and, uh, and uh, where there are no risk, uh, low risks, Distance learning uh, that includes print, online, TV, and radio, and a combination of these methods of called, uh, called blended and homeschooling. As we know, the government has allowed face to face learning starting this uh, school year 2020 2021. The other important feature is the streamlining of the, of, of the competencies from 14,000. 171 to 5,689, or a reduction of 80%, uh, calling this uh, reduced set as the most essential learning competencies of metrics. Next slide, please. Uh, accompanying uh, accompanying the, the uh, uh, learning continuity plan are, are laws and department orders, such as the Bayanihan, as already mentioned by Dr. Reyes, and the import important pictures of which is authorizing the hiring of learning support aids, which, which I think are very important for teaching assistants to help in the production and reproduction of modular learning materials and the special budgets to finance acquisition of laptops, internet connectivity load, uh, DepEd TV and radio subsidies and allowances and learning modules. In addition, DepEd orders were also issued to cover assessment uh, and grading and utilization of the uh, and qualification of the uh, uh, learning support aids. Next slide, please. Uh, for me, the most revealing aspect of 
for which we have data for is is the uh, is uh, uh, to back up our claims is the learners' responses uh, offered uh, by the learning mortality. This is this is shown in this slide. Uh, this slide tells a lot of stories, so which are very important uh, for us to to know uh, in trying to understand what happened to, uh, to in basic education. It was. Uh, fortunate that the DepEd included data gathering on the learning modality used by enrolled students in school year 2020-2021, which we all know used remote learning. Uh, this is the most extensive data that can describe what happened during that school year. We would have wanted to know the extent of learning as well, but unfortunately, as far as I know, we don't have data on, 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 on the, the extent of learning. So let's, let's stick to the enrollment uh, by modality. This graph summarizes a very important pattern of learning modality. One important pattern is that regardless of the level, almost all of the public school student, all students in public schools are using printed modules. That is 90% in elementary, 83% in junior high school, and 80% in senior high school. On the other hand, we could uh, we only see a considerable proportion of uh, online learning in private schools. This is 46% in elementary, 36% in junior high school, and 44% in junior high schools. As already mentioned by Dr. Reyes uh, earlier, uh, this uh, people describe this as a reflection of di digital divide. And in this case, this is digital divide between public and private schools. Next slide, please. Ah, no, sorry, uh, let me continue. Another pattern that I uh, uh, that I see in there is the that uh, there is considerable learning in private school uh, where, where there is considerable le uh, online learning. There's also uh, blended learning. You have also a, a big proportion of blended learning. Which are uh, a likely explanation for this is, is unreliable internet connection. The state of internet connection where it is available is such that pure online learning cannot con be continuously conducted and blended learning has to be resorted to uh, because of, of, of the state of perhaps the internet connection. And finally, I'd like to highlight as well that TV and radio did not figure prominently among the learning modes. This fact is important because we will see later that uh, there is a very high uh, uh, ownership of, of, uh, of TV and radio as we'll show in, uh, when we look at the, the household's data, household data. Uh, to better understand this pattern, an important question that comes to mind is whether this is more because of a lack of capacities to deliver online learning in schools, or even uh, or even with available capacities in schools, households cannot avail of, of online learning. I will answer this question in two ways. One is to look at the distribution by area, for example, by region, uh, because the lack of basic internet infrastructure can explain the lack of online learning in an area. Two, uh, use data on the availability of amenities at the household level. Uh, the next set of slides is devoted to these issues. Uh, next slide, please. Let's start with the distribution modality by region. And this graph tells you the enrollment by region. And, and this is uh, for elementary on public on the left and private on the right. So the graph on the left shows you that the distribution of public elementary by learning modality shows that except in NCR, where it is the proportion of students on printed modules is only 50%, more than 80% uh, of students are on printed module for the rest of, for the rest of the regions. That's, that's, that's what you see in the left uh, graph. Compare this graph with the, uh, with the graph on the right describing distribution in private schools. You see that as much as 65% in private elementary school are online in NCR. Uh, this graph tells you that it is not about the availability of internet in the area that describes access to the online modality. The internet may be available in the area, but households cannot afford online access, at least access conducive to online learning, not having uh, access at home or and intermittent access are not conducive to online learning. Next slide, please. Uh, the next slide shows you a very similar pattern uh, for junior high school. And uh, this is the same pattern that you see in elementary. And the next slide also tells you the same pattern for senior high school. Next slide, please. 
So uh, whatever the level, whether elementary, junior high school, and, and uh, you see that, that the public schools are, are mostly on, on printed, printed materials, except for NCR. Uh, so now uh, what has been described so far is uh, use data from enrollment uh, on DepEd. Let's now turn to the household data using APIS 2020 data set. This data set has enrollment data by level and by type of school as well. Uh, thank to PSA uh, for maintaining this data set. In uh, addition, it has data on the availability of amenities for remote learning as well as uh, uh, income levels. I use uh, measures of availability, availability of uh, amenities for remote learning as indicators of reachability. Reachability for remote learning is indicated by availability of home uh, internet access, access to TV and radio and cell phones. Uh, uh, next slide, please. Let's start with the home internet access. Uh, this graph tells you that only 12% uh, uh, of students have access to broadband internet at home. I want to point out that you may have heard of higher internet access from other data sources. And let me highlight that this refers to broadband internet access at home. The use of broadband internet at home is deliberate because it is the kind of a connection that uh, effectively enables continuous learning uh, at home. Uh, all the rest will be have uh, difficulty. But what is more important is that the students' internet access in private schools, uh, students who are enrolled in private schools compared to those of students enrolled in public schools is very much higher. Uh, like for example, in elementary, 60% versus 9%. Uh, public, uh, private public. And in, in junior high school, this is 47% versus 9%. In senior high school, this is 37% versus 10% uh, private public. This result strongly explains the disparity, uh, disparity in uh, and the use of online learning and, and the, uh, domin uh, the preponderance of using of printed modules among private public schools compared to students in, pub, uh, in, uh, in public schools compared to students in private schools, as I've shown already by the uh, learning by modality data. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the next slide tries to explain uh, what, uh, what are the correlates of bro having broadband internet at home. And I, try, I use uh, APIS data with the uh, and, and, and merge it with the infrastructure available in the area, available uh, in, from the Albert et al. Uh, study, which used the DICT household survey, uh, ICT survey. And, and uh, this table uh, tells us that the results are quite revealing. It is reported that the, uh, uh, the table uses standardized uh, coefficients, which should be interpreted as the in standard deviation units. Uh, it shows that, uh, and it shows that the presence of the broadband infrastructure in the area is, is the most important correlate of the availability of internet at home. It says that uh, one standard deviation, for instance, uh, change in the presence of the broadband infrastructure is correlated with 0.45 standard deviation change in the availability of home and the internet. This is followed by per capita income with 0.34 standard deviation, family size with 0.19 standard deviation. Uh, and uh, parents with high school education point them in standard deviation. That's, that's uh, so basically it's the infrastructure, what determines ability broadband internet is the availability and infrastructure plus the next uh, determinants are, are, are income, family size, and, and, and parents in, with high school education. Next slide, please. So the next slide tells you about uh, the case of TV, TV and radio. And, and, and you see here that the disparity in access is not too different between public and private schools. In addition, and more importantly, is the access is quite high, uh, or uh, availability is quite high, I should say. 80% uh, and above for TV and 35% and above for region. But uh, I then got to recall that the enrollment data never sh shown earlier, uh, this kinds, these kinds of availability will never uh, reflected on, in terms of pro proportion of students using TV and radio. Next slide, please. Uh, the next slide tells you about uh, cell phones. Uh, cell phones can be used in some sense. Uh, uh, finally, this, uh, 
uh, availability of cell phones tells you that there's again there's no uh, uh, large disparity between public and private school students. More importantly, the access is almost universal. Uh, so 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 uh, so that's that's the, so what has been shown so far is average reachability. Our next uh, thing that I, I I look at is how is the reachability by socioeconomic class, which is as shown by the next set of slide. Next slide, please. Uh, reachability basically is summarized in this graph. So this is this is combination of the leftmost board, the accessibility of the broadband by by income classes. Uh, the second one is availability of computers. This one, the middle is TV, radio, and cell phones. So you, you will uh, uh, see here that by by income classes, the, there's a large disparity uh, disparity across uh, access to broadband and computer, but not so much for TV radio and cell phones. So that's that's the story of this. Uh, so across uh, income classes, it's only the, the availability of broadband and, and computer with some large disparity across income classes. So finally, I'd like to show you how what's the quality of home support for learning. As uh, our study in, in uh, using PISA, next slide please, uh, uh, shows you that, uh, shows us that the, that, uh, the that even with face-to-face -face learning, the quality of home support is a very strongly correlated with test scores. So I tried to look at uh, what kind, what is the quality of home support. So in the, in the absence of a teacher, uh, the importance of home support for learning should even be more critical. I tried to describe this with this, this graph uh, by highest education qualification of parents. Basically, uh, uh, the, the, this graph tells you about the proportion of uh, uh, Parents with high school that are high school graduates by income classes. So you will see here that, that the average is about 10% of, of, of our high school graduates and above. Uh, and for the richest quintile, this is 28% and 3% for the lowest quintiles. So there is a disparity in, in the quality of home support. Uh, uh, of course, not uh, uh, use, uh, not included here is that the, the poor maybe we need to work uh, outside the home and will be out. Uh, most of the time rather than helping their students. Uh, again, this will have uh, profound implications for learning. So next slide, uh, let's, uh, let me summarize uh, with, uh, with six statements what we just uh, have gone through. Most of the students in public schools use printed modules for all levels, elementary, junior high school, and senior high school. Second, only the private schools, uh, uh, will one find a considerable proportion of students on online and on, on blended learning. There is a significant disparity in the internet access at home, uh, particularly for broadband internet, which is conducive for uh, home, uh, home lear learning and uh, between students enrolled in public, private and public schools across education levels. And number four is that the availability of the internet at home is correlated with the presence of urban infrastructure in the area and income. And number five, that the availability of TV and radio is high, and there is but uh, and there's not much difference between public and private students. But uh, this is the same uh, true uh, with uh, uh, it's also true for cell phones uh, with even higher availability. There is a wide disparity of distribution of either parents. Uh, being a uh, uh, high school graduate among income quintiles. Uh, let me have the last two slides on the recommendations. Uh, first recommendation, next slide, please. So the online mode of learning, uh, what we have seen is that online mode of learning will not reach most of the public school students. That's, that's, that's what the data is saying. Uh, However, forward looking or, or uh, desirable is that uh, that we want to build capacities on online learning. Uh, 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 even if we provide it in public schools, so the students will not be able to access it at home. So that's basic. That's one uh, implication of what of the data they said. So hence the desire to build uh, online learning capacity at this time will not be the most effective uh, at the present time. Uh, desirable as it may be over the long term. Uh, so what then is most effective? Uh, we second uh, said that the primary and exceeding concern is to support the learning of the most popular mode, which is printed modules. What's needed is supporting the pop uh, printed modules. And uh, one of the uh, recent uh, survey of the World Bank 
uh, office uh, highlighted the lack of interaction between teachers and students. So there are already examples in the literature and in other countries of using cell phones to improve the interaction between teachers and students and parents. Uh, and these have been shown to be effective. So this, these are some of the things that we should uh, be looking at, that uh, not to, to, to dream about online learning because our students are not yet there, but perhaps we should do an intermediate uh, use and um, more strategic use of technologies like cell phones to increase the interaction between teachers and students using their cell phones. Okay. Uh, the other thing that we we would like we would observe is that, and the third is that the education delivery through TV and theory needs to be improved because we have high ownership of uh, TV and radio, but you you don't see that reflected in the enrollment um, using. Uh, TV and radio modalities. That's that's the third one. And next, the last slide. Uh, uh, the we should address the disparity in the quality of home support by socioeconomic classes. In the absence of the teachers, uh, home support is critical, and uh, and the data on quality of home support is, is showing us uh, uh, that the home. Um, Home support by socioeconomic class is, 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 is there's large disparity. One of the possible, as I've mentioned already, I mentioned especially the, the use of learning support aids. Uh, one possible way of addressing this is, is using learning support aids to target and support uh, poorer households where there is not uh, uh, no home support that can be expected. Now, uh, five that the uh, address the anticipated learning disparity by socioeconomic class with remote learning. Since it's clear that remote learning as practice discriminates against students from poorer households because of the lack of interaction and more inferior quality of home support, interventions should to counteract this tendency should be found. Examples, as I've said, uh, uh, promote the interaction between teachers and students, and one of the one of the ways that you can do that is using your cell phones. And another one is target home support for children of low educated parents. Finally, uh, recognize the need for massive remedial measures to address the low test scores. Even before the pandemic, you already said that when I started, we should remember that we have been performing very poorly uh, in, 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 in large scale assessments. And so, uh, and that is uh, that those results were uh, taken during the face-to-face -face learning. So we are already uh, have low uh, education outcomes. So by that, uh, we need a massive remedial. Now we go into remote learning, uh, which have which are uh, as most people would you would ask would have a lower uh, lower uh, effectiveness uh, than 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 face-to-face. -face. So. That we added to the already low performance, we should be really planning for a massive remedial measures uh, for our schools. And the other thing that I would like to highlight is that these remedial learnings should focus on uh, poor households because of uh, there is a, the disparity already that that, that and, and even uh, uh, exacerbated with the with the pandemic uh, uh, the learning during the pandemic. That's my last statement. Thank you.